How's it going everybody? So today's video is going to be about how to run a Monte Carlo simulation using LibreOffice Calc. So before I start a few caveats. First of all I'm assuming that you know what a Monte Carlo study is, that you're familiar with them and also that you're familiar with LibreOffice Calc. If not this video might not make a lot of sense to you. The other thing is that the LibreOffice Calc isn't really the ideal software for running a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, it's a little bit slow and cumbersome, but it can be done. And especially if you're familiar with the software and you've only got a few simulations to do, it could be an okay option. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've got a demonstration file here. Um, so as an example to show how you might run a Monte Carlo study using this software. Uh, this example that I'm using is, so imagine that you're saving for your retirement, which is going to be in 20 years time. You've got 50,000 to start in your savings now and every year you're going to add 10,000. And all of these savings or investments, you're going to invest them into uh, a stock index fund uh, and I'm using the example from the historical data for the S&P 500 uh, index which has on average from 20, 1926 to 2018 returned 11.88% and the volatility or the standard deviation of the return has been 19.76% and I'm just going to assume that these returns are normally distributed. So before we run the whole Monte Carlo study, we're going to have to calculate a single iteration, how this might work out in one random time that you might try it over 20 years. So this is what all these calculations are for. Um, I've got starting at the beginning of year one, of course, we have our 50,000. Uh, and this is referenced uh, using this formula to cell B2. And as you can see, I've got these dollar signs in here, which means that no matter where, when I go to copy this, when I copy this region, oh, let's undo that. Um, when I copy this entire region here later on, this part here is still always going to reference to B2. Uh, whereas in the next step um, we don't use these dollar signs so the next step is that we're multiplying our total um, fund times the return in that year minus 3.98 percent uh, we see that our return therefore was minus basically 2000 there's no dollar signs here and again this is really important because it's relative positioning. You want the one that's two cells to the left and one cell to the left. Not It's not always going to be B13. It could be B86 or B2011 and so on. Um, so these calculations over the 20 years bring us down to the final figure. In this case, it's 5 million. And this cell... Uh, let me just see. Right, I've got a mistake in here. That should not be an absolute reference. Yeah, you can see we're copying the 800,000 from down here. This is just a direct copy here for our final result at the end of 20 years, how much you've got to retire. So the randomness comes in here. Now I'm not going to explain in detail how this formula works, but Basically what it does is, you can copy and paste this basically into your computer. It gives us a value from a normal distribution which has a mean of 11.88% and a standard deviation of 19.76%. And I've copied this formula all the way down here. These all do the exact same thing. Um, 
And the final thing to note is that if I hit F4, it will refresh all of these values, see? And obviously that leads to a different return. So you can keep doing this. You could actually run a little simulation like this. You could try it 10 different times and see the different values you might get. But we want to do something a little bit more advanced. And for this, we're going to use LibreOffice Calc's Autofill tool. So you're probably familiar with this. You might have used it to do something like this here. You fill some cells from 1 to 13 like so. But it can actually be used in a much more advanced way. So say you had 1, 2, 4. And we select all of these. And now we grab this little rectangle on the bottom right. Watch what happens. So it will, what it's doing here, it's adding on one to all of these numbers. And what we're actually going to do is select this entire area, all of our calculations. And we're going to duplicate this. So once again, we're going to grab this square in the bottom right, right, uh, left click on it and pull it down. Let's bring it down as far as here. So as you can see, iteration has gone from one to two to three and so on. And in each of these, we've got a new and it's a different number you'll notice that's calculated. Uh, so we're actually going to select this again. We're not interested in just two or three iterations. We want a whole lot. So I'm going to start scrolling way down my page. Uh, now you want to go down quite some distance because that'll give you more iterations, better data. But you don't want to go too far. Because if you go too far, it will overload your computer's memory and your computer will freeze. I'm running a slightly old laptop and I can find that uh, I can get quite a few thousand lines out of it, no problem. So I'm going to stop around here. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, this is fully completed, this section here. This little bit is incomplete, so I'm going to delete these rows. Okay, now just before you go any further, it's a good idea to check that everything seems about right here we've got 2 million that sounds reasonable iteration 304 that's believable um just in case any of your formulas didn't work quite right but i'm happy enough with this so on to the next step so once again we've got iteration one here two here and so on all the way down and what we want to do is just copy these numbers this is what we're interested in the output results and an easy way to select all of those is, I'm going to show you now. So select column A, and then we're going to go to sheet, no, data, more filters, standard filter. And we're only going to select the rows, we're only interested in rows that have ending value written in them. So column A equals ending value okay and as you can see we've got a whole lot of errors so let's go to row right let's make them now you have to find out what's going on with these errors here. So I'm going to go to row 226. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to go column A. I want to make all of these other rows visible. So format, rows, show. And I'm going to scroll down to 226. Okay, so...
Aha, so my um, this link should have been absolute. Okay. And we'll make that formula the same for all of these. And now we have to go through this procedure again to correct our mistake all the way down. So again, this is kind of shown where LibreOffice Calc is far from ideal. Uh, although there might be a quicker formula to do this autofill all the way down and if you have a formula for that I'd love to know about it in the comments section so I think it was around seven or eight thousand I did the last time there we go that should do so now once again we have to be careful okay no that's all right this last one is complete as well so now just to double check everything seems about right we have five million here one million six hundred thousand two million seems okay to me so let's go back up to the top and once again we're going to filter so it's data more filter standard filter column A equals ending value okay and as you can see we've gotten rid of all those errors so these are the values that we're interested in we can just if you go control shift arrow down it'll select all of those then you can go control C and at this point I'm going to copy these values and paste them into a new sheet so I'm going to pl click this plus down here I'm going to call this output values um, and just so I don't forget what these are I'm going to type Monte Carlo output values and into this cell I'm going to go right click paste special unformatted text because if I paste the formula in let's just try doesn't work right paste special unformatted text and that looks okay to me there we go so we've got let's see 300 and something we have 309 values there uh, which is providing us with quite a good bit of information but I would rather have a thousand to have richer data so now the great thing about LibreOffice Calc if you hit F4 you'll see all of these values refresh so you've got 300 completely new values now we can go control shift arrow up from here because our we selected the lowest square out of this group uh, we're going to copy that and once again right click paste special unformatted text ok so we've got over 600 values now F4 to refresh again control shift arrow down selects that then we go copy and we're going to paste as unformatted text here ok and let's get a few more values I'll just select them like this here because I don't want 300 this time control C to copy and I'm going to right click paste special unformatted text okay let's refresh that and copy those again paste special unformatted text oh. oh 
All right, and I'm going to move these up because I don't want that strange sign. And I'm only going to take the first 1,000 values. I'm not interested in these. Just to keep it simple, a nice round number. I'm going to cut those. So at this point, hit save, and our Monte Carlo simulation is actually complete. Uh, so we've got 1,000 different values, simulated values, um, and those should be in currency form. Uh, these are 1,000 different values that you may get if you follow this retirement plan and assuming that our um, format, let me just see. Yeah, assuming that these values are realistic and that they will continue, that the S&P 500 will continue to behave like this in the future. Um, these are 1,000 reasonably representative values of what you might expect to get at the end of 20 years. So that concludes the video basically on the Monte Carlo simulation. However, you're almost definitely going to want to do something with this data to make it easier to understand. So I'm going to make a part two video which shows you uh, some graphical and statistical ways to make sense of this data. But that's it for part one. Thanks very much for watching.